So today I find myself having to talk about the misconceptions of the Nintendo Switch in the video game marketplace. Now these misconceptions aren't about the general consumers, but this is, you know, the, those of us that call ourselves gamers. And this isn't necessarily Nintendo fans, but it can include some Nintendo fans. As we've seen on our channel, there are plenty of Nintendo fans that don't get the Switch, don't understand it, chastise it, and that's fine. I actually don't think there's anything wrong with having a negative opinion about the Nintendo Switch. It's not going to appeal to everyone, and there's going to be decisions made with it that don't make sense for many people. And one particular decision that has been getting criticized ever since NBA 2K18 came out and... Uh, and Nintendo came out at the same time and announced that you need an additional storage card, an, an SD card, a micro SD card, to expand the storage in order to even play the physical version of NBA 2K18. It kind of came to an affront that the Switch doesn't have enough storage. And I think, in general... All of us can agree that the Switch does not have enough storage. And it is amazing that it offers micro SD expansion because micro SD cards are pretty cheap. Even at 40 bucks roughly to get a 128 gigabyte one, if you can wait until November, there's going to be Black Friday sales and you might even be able to pull off one of those cards for 20 bucks. Uh, and it, it's not, it, it's not impossible. It's not hard to find whether you want to buy your micro SD cards online or at GameStop or Best Buy or Radio Shack or even Walmart, you can find micro SD cards everywhere because there are so many different devices, including cameras and phones and tablets and even some, you know, phablets or <laughs> if you want to move beyond the, the, the tablet range of things, you could be talking about certain, well, what do we call them? I, I guess netbooks or Google Chromebooks uh, can also use micro SD cards for expandable storage. And many micro SD cards come with an SD card uh, converter. So even if you just want to use a standard SD card, you can get a micro SD card that comes with a converter and use it in that way as well. So they're very common, really easy to get, generally extremely cheap to upgrade your storage significantly on Nintendo Switch. And the reason that we're talking about this is because a fellow YouTuber, a YouTuber I respect, a YouTuber I watch frequently, I don't catch every single video he makes, but I am subscribed to his channel and generally thinks he does excellent work, is Rich from Review Tech USA. The, the channel itself is Review Tech USA, but he's always like, I'm Rich from, just like I'm, I'm Nathaniel Rojans Jans from Nintendo Prime, I get it. So he decided to rip into an editorial that was written on Nintendo Enthusiasts. And I'll have a link to his video and the editorial in the description below. And the editorial itself from Nintendo Enthusiast dealt with this controversy surrounding the storage on Switch, especially with NBA 2K18 and any other game that's going to require additional storage, even from the physical version. And in general, I disagree with a lot of the assessment that Nintendo Enthusiast made. Uh, comparing the Switch to an iPhone is just not a comparison that's generally worth considering. Uh, because, yes, the, the Switch is a dedicated uh, handheld device, but or a dedicated, home, a dedicated gaming device, let's call it. But the way that Rich attacks it, attacks the piece, shows that not only does he and all the people that agree with him, but gamers in general just do not understand why certain decisions were made with the switch and a lot of people at this channel note that i'm pretty unbiased or at least i try to be when i talk about nintendo because despite the fact that i'm a huge nintendo fan uh, i don't make excuses for them uh when they're doing something that's stupid and while i wish there was more storage in the nintendo switch i do think the switch would have to cost more money for that to happen and here's the arguments that Rich essentially presents. He keeps talking about how you should be comparing the Switch not to tablets and phones, but to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, because those are the systems that it's directly competing with. But here's the thing. When you're going to make that comparison to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, we have to remember the significant differences. The only differences he mentioned is that, yes, you can take the Switch on the go, it's got a screen, and it's slightly portable. It's not slightly portable, it's completely portable. I don't, I don't know why 
he keeps using the term slightly, but he compares it to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with their 500 gigabytes and their one terabytes, and he does admit, obviously, you're not going to be able to fit a mechanical drive inside the Switch, uh, and yada, yada, yada. He, he admits that it's easier and cheaper to get that storage on those devices. But what he do, he fails to mention is the reason those devices require that internal storage. Those systems require games physical or digital, to be installed on the hard drive. It is a significant difference between the Switch and the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. A vast majority of the content on Nintendo Switch does not need to be installed unless you buy digitally. That's just the reality we live in. So he's ignoring the entire physical aspect of the Nintendo Switch just because there's going to be a handful or more of games on the Switch that are even with the physical version, you'll need a micro SD card. That's fine. There are plenty of people who are going to buy the Nintendo Switch that are never going to buy those games and are never going to need to upgrade their storage because they keep buying physical only. And even when he talks about the storage on the system, he says, oh, you can install Breath of the Wild in a couple indie games, and then you're basically done. That's actually wrong. You can install Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, uh, and I believe Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and a couple indie games before you're done, because he's massively overstating the size of Nintendo's games, and he's actually massively overstating the size of games on Nintendo Switch, because Breath of the Wild, until NBA 2K18 releases, Breath of the Wild was the largest game to date on the system, and was only 13 gigs. And so when he's like talking about how you know Super Mario Odyssey could end up being one of those massive games, it's probably going to be smaller than Breath of the Wild. Uh, maybe it'll be bigger, or maybe it'll be around the same size, but in general, it, Nintendo's games are just not big. The whole reason that they could go with the storage medium and the cartridges like they did is because Nintendo games do not exceed 30 gigabytes. They, they don't exceed 13 gigabytes. Like 13 gigabytes, might I'd have to go through Nintendo's history, but that might be the biggest game Nintendo's ever made in terms of game size, you know, file size. So yeah, it's a, a complete misunderstanding here. When you compare the Switch and the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 together, you have to consider the differences between the systems. And reality is, for most consumers, when you buy a Nintendo Switch, you're never going to need that storage if you just buy physical versions of the game. Now, there is a point to be made that when you buy an Xbox One or PlayStation 4, you can play any game ever released on that platform maybe you can only play six of them i don't know it depends on the size of the game but you can play any game released on that platform without buying anything else no extra controllers no extra peripherals no extra anything you could just play any game released on that platform and with the switch that's technically not going to be 100 percent true as an example you can't play nba 2k18 just buying nba 2k18 and buying the switch you'll have to buy an accessory in this case a micro sd card so that is a point that works in microsoft and sony's favor and it does suck that nintendo couldn't have the base storage inside the nintendo switch at 64 gigabytes because if they had done that suddenly the requirement of micro SD cards for for certain physical games would completely vanish. And the Switch is actually set up in a unique way with the hardware where the NAND flash memory is modular. And there's even like an extra connector inside of the Switch that's not being used right now that's near the modular memory, suggesting that in the future, Nintendo Switch was already set up to have additional memory in it. And the reason... Uh, at least I feel like it's a pretty obvious reason that the Nintendo Switch does not have that additional memory at launch, and especially in this first year, is because of the cost to consumers. Nintendo had a very specific price point they wanted to hit with the Switch. It's highly doubtful they wanted to go above $299.99 because we're talking about an area where Nintendo needs to hit a specific price point, and because people are going to compare it to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, it has to be in a, in a comparable price range. And they, weren't, they can't release it at $199 because they would be losing significant money on every unit sold. And I've heard even that the $299.99 price, that Nintendo is barely making a profit per unit sold so it's almost at cost at $299.99 so if they would have doubled the memory size the double the NAND flash memory size you're talking about at least a $50 price hike if not a $100 price hike and I don't know you know if it would be 50 or 100 it, 
I, this is where the comparison to smart devices comes in because while I do not think it's fair to directly compare a dedicated gaming device to smart devices, because smart devices, as Rich points out, are primarily communication devices that can play games. And even if you think about how you use it, you know, if you're using Facebook, that's a communication platform. If you're using Twitter, that's a communication platform. Uh, even watching YouTube videos, again, a form of communication. So I, I get that. That's what smart devices are primarily for, that, and they can happen to game. And I actually think there are some excellent games on those devices. But they are not dedicated gaming platforms. But the Switch is still comparable because despite the fact that it's a dedicated gaming platform, we all know the Nintendo Switch is built with smart device technology. It is using NAND Flash, which is what smart devices use. It is using a mobile unit in the Tegra X1, using mobile types of RAM, using mobile everything. In fact, the main difference between the Switch and, say, a smart device in terms of the tech inside of it is that they are cooling it with an active fan, which you are typically not going to find on a phone or tablet. Maybe there's a tablet out there somewhere that has it, but as far as, in, like I'm just thinking right now, I can't even think of a tablet that even has a physical fan inside of it with active cooling. So that that's just the, the, the general benefit of it being a gaming first platform, or right now a gaming only platform, is that it prioritized you know getting better performance out of the parts inside of it by having active cooling and at the same point it's still built with the same technology so when it's built with the mobile technology trying to become a gaming platform on top of it you're left between a rock and a hard place because all that stuff inside of the switch is not cheap it is more expensive to build a Switch with mobile technology to try to be a powerful gaming device than it is to use traditional off-the-shelf parts like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 use. Even with the customizable fabrication processes and everything, they are using stuff that is generally cheaper to make in comparison to, say, a Tegra X1. And while it's an off-the-shelf Tegra X1 inside a Nintendo Switch, it's it's still expensive to make those Tegras. Uh, it's expensive for the screen, even at 720p. It's expensive for everything. On uh, mobile devices, nothing is cheap to do. Now, he brings up a comparison where uh, some smart devices are cheaper. You know, you can get certain smart devices under $200 that have more storage. But here's the thing. Those smart devices are not as powerful as the Nintendo Switch. So when you're talking about devices that do not compare comparably in terms of the tech inside it with the Nintendo Switch, and this is without even including the Joy-Cons or the dock or cables or anything else, just the, the, the tablet unit. When you're comparing a really cheap budget Android device to the Switch, which is significantly more powerful than that device, you start to lose the comparison there because that device that is cheaper, and uh, that Android device that's cheaper, that's not as powerful, that's a little sluggish, is fine, but they prioritized storage over other specs in the device. Whereas Nintendo prioritized performance over storage because they have physical carts for their device that 95% of those physical carts will never require an SD card. So, in summary here... I feel like Rich is kind of an encapsulation of the general reaction from gamers over this SD card fiasco, where I agree in principle that the Switch should at least have 64 gigs, so that we would never see a, a physical version of a game release that says micro SD card required. I, I would, I think that is something Nintendo is going to target and do in 2018. As I mentioned, they have a modular memory unit. As soon as the prices come down on other components, they're going to be able to upgrade the flash storage and keep the Switch at the exact same price in 2018. In fact, they might even phase out the 32 gigabyte models, and that might upset some some current owners. Uh, but you know, sometimes that's just the price you pay for early adoption is uh <laughs> is that you know you're going to have a better device in 2018 for the same price and i don't even think that's a problem because if that bothers you so much like go spend 20 bucks and get an extra 32 gigs or it's even less than that you can get like 64 gigs extra for 20 bucks in your switch so it yeah it's to me this is all kind of silly uh, and it kind of shows the continued misconceptions about the Nintendo Switch in the marketplace because as much as Nintendo advertises it as a console, a console, a console, a console, it is a traditional home console that you could take with you on the go, we all know that it's 
primarily a portable that can be played at home on a TV. The entire system is designed around the portability and you literally have a plastic dock you have to slide the system into to work on your TV. So it is definitely a portable first, home console second, and yes, you can use it as a home console first or a home console only device and that is perfectly fine, but I feel like that general gamers out there just even the ones that like the switch because rich likes the switch he loves the nintendo switch he thinks it's a fantastic device and he likes the games on it but i feel like even he has misconceptions here over why some of these comparisons about playstation 4 and xbox one to switch and switch to smartphones uh, and why some of these comparisons don't make sense and why some of them do and the comparisons to smart devices is because the Switch is using smart device technology inside it. And uh, the reason that comparisons to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One don't work very well is because, one, those are traditional underbox things that use a different type of storage. And those systems require game installs. Nintendo system only does that if you buy digital games. And while that's a growing market, Nintendo addressed that market by saying, look, if you want to go digital only, we are offering you a cheap solution to expand your storage. But we're not going to push that extra storage, that extra pricing onto all of our consumers because there's a lot of consumers that are perfectly fine going physical only. And the Nintendo Switch is even highly unique. And, and this is, tell me this if this is true of other platforms. The Nintendo Switch seems to have a ton of indie games releasing in physical formats. The Binding of Isaac is an example. But that's just one. There's so many indie games that are releasing in a physical format on Nintendo Switch. And on top of this, part of the issue, at least right now, this is obviously going to be an issue in the future when you have games over 32 gigabytes. Nintendo offers 32 gigabyte cards the nba 2k 18 is only 25 gigs technically it could fit on a 32 gigabyte card they are choosing to not use the 32 gigabyte card to cut cost to 2k and instead saying look because other systems do have installs and downloads we're just going to give you about half the game on like a 15 gig cart to for your switch which saves us money and just let you download the rest of it onto your car uh, onto your sd card and the fact that it requires um an sd card you know because you think you know, if there's 15 gigs of the game on this thing you should only have to download like you know 10 gigs i have plenty of storage for that unfortunately i think they're gonna they're basically going to be installing the game off the cartridge and via download almost like the cartridge is a disc for playstation 4 and xbox one and that's because that's how they treat those systems so they're just going to treat it the same on switch and whatever we can't do anything about third parties making those decisions but it's actually the fact that it's taken up until what are we system released in march we're six plus months out and we still right now until the 15th have yet to have a game come out that requires a micro sd card to play that lets you know that this is really a minor issue for Nintendo Switch. And primarily when people buy Nintendo Switch, they're not going to be buying it for those games. They're not going to be buying it for NBA 2K18 or for LA Noir. They're buying it for the exclusive content that is nowhere near the size of those games. And on top of that, that exclusive content is generally going to come from Nintendo or Nintendo's partners, and that content is going to be fully available on a cartridge that you can slide into your system. I highly doubt you're ever going to see Nintendo release a game on Switch that they created or they helped fund that is not going to be just 100% natively on those cartridges. So... This is just a situation that is being completely blown out of proportion. It, it is disappointing. I do agree the Switch should have more base storage. should have double the base storage it has. And I also believe Nintendo is going to give us that in 2018, at least by holiday 2018. But at the same point, we have to recognize that if the Switch was more expensive, while it still might be selling well, it, it could be a, a 3DS situation where it's just priced slightly too high at launch and it really impacts uh, long-term sales. And in general, the sacrifice to 32 gigabytes to keep the cost down on the consumer end is a fair trade-off when 90, right now 100% of the library does not require an SD card to enjoy that content. 
So, yeah, I... Again, the Switch is a dedicated gaming device. I just don't think it's fair to compare it to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Or is it fair to compare it directly to smart devices? Nintendo kind of exists in their own realm. And this is what sucks is just because it's a home console doesn't mean it's a direct competitor to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Because the Switch isn't going for the same audience. And it, it frustrates me when people keep thinking that the Nintendo says the home console. That means it's competing with the PlayStation 4. I'm like, no, it's a portable home console. That's an entirely different concept. Ugh. Man. What I'm saying is, it's perfectly reasonable that I own a PlayStation 4 and a, a Nintendo Switch for, for completely different reasons. I, ugh, man. Anyways, folks, it, I, I'm a very frustrated Nintendo Ruff with Jance. Just... Gaming community is getting it wrong again, and I understand that I'm obviously going to have a tendency to defend Nintendo, but the thing is, I agree that Nintendo should have more storage. I just think it's ridiculous, um, some of the criticisms coming out against Nintendo when you're comparing it to systems that require game installs. It is one of the most annoying things about the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is that when I buy a physical game, I have to use a hard drive space to play it. Oh my, well it's like, why buy physical? Why buy physical on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One? There's literally no benefit to it besides the reselling of games. Remember, we're supposed to hate the resale market. You're supposed to hold on to your games. So, oh, man. Sorry, I guess, that Nintendo made uh, physical products uh, or physical versions of games a viable medium in 2017. I guess that's what I have to apologize for. N Nintendo thinking of people who don't want to buy everything digitally. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit this dislike button. Or hit that dislike button. Oh my god, I can't even speak right now. Oh, I will just catch you guys in the next one.